and the critic's badgering you. You know, the critic always shows up, right? You have to learn how to turn that critic off and tell it to shut up, you know? Um, there are some days where I'm just singing. You know, I'm just trying to cut some vocals in the studio. And the critic's going, you can't sing. You didn't warm up enough. The tone sucks, you know? <laughs> And I'm going, oh, shut up, you know? And then, you know, one of the best ways is you probably already know to warm up your vocals. For those of us who haven't taken any vocal lessons, you take a little, uh, you know, ideas from everybody that you can, is humming. Just gently hum in a very low volume for 40 minutes to an hour before your gig or before your recording or before you really want to sing so that you don't hear the critic nagging at you about how bad it sounds. And that literally warms you up. Eventually, you start to hum through your whole range, and you start to feel more comfortable. And basically, what you're doing is just warming it up. It's a muscle, just like anything else. You wouldn't just go out and sprint and expect to do the 100-yard dash without warming up, right? So same thing with your voice. You want to take care of it, do a little bit of warming up. And then if you're in between shows, keep lightly humming so that your voice stays good for the second show. And then when you're done with the show, keep lightly humming so that you learn how to cool down. That way you won't go hoarse. Because as a muscle, it's attracting all that extra energy and blood flow and all that stuff. You know. And uh, when it stays all full, the vocal cords rub against it and you go hoarse. So if you just cool down, everything returns to normal and, you know, like everything else in your muscle, lactic acid and all those things, everything decides to go back to what it was. <laughs> so did everybody uh, get that? I don't know if everybody was here when I first started, but this is one of those microphones from M-Audio. This is called the Sputnik. I like the name Sputnik. And uh, I was so amazed how big it was. I, I just couldn't believe it. It was just like, you know, I saw a picture of it. I thought it was like this, you know, but it's this, it's definitely not the mic to perform with because, you know, it's like, that person doesn't have a face, you know? But <laughs> you can get these now like half off because M-Audio is one of the vendors that works with Berkeley. This is a uh, studio, uh, what they call a tube compressor. These are really amazing, uh, I mean, tube condenser microphones. It's an awesome microphone. And it sounds awesome with uh, recording and certainly going through a nice preamp. It comes with its own little box there, that little power supply. And so, you know, here I was wanting a Sputnik. I uh, got two for the price of one if I had gone retail, you know, just because of this great deal Berkeley's got of it, so take advantage of that if you want. I have another one that's in that same tuning. What key did I put that one in? I think I did it in the second fret. This one was kind of funny because it was at the change of a semester. Still the top E, still down to C. Sometimes I'd be like, if I ask myself, what would I like to sing about? What does the world need to hear? Uh, what am I deeply feeling? Or, you know, what, what is it that I need to say right now to my fans? You know, oh, that is so overwhelming. It's like I don't know where to start. Forget about it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to go there. I can't answer those questions. But with free associating, you know, you, you give yourself permission to write the, the worst stuff in America. You can just write anything you want. And the whole cool thing about that is not judging it too soon, right? You're not trying to use it. You're not trying to critique it. You're not, you're just letting your pen fly. And in books on this list, like Writing Down the Bones, Natalie Goldberg talks about just let, keep your pen moving. Just keep it moving. And some of my students have said to me, well, you know, I don't mind all this free association and writing whatever comes to my mind, like this is stupid, boy, there are a lot of red chairs, and look at that camera, and oh my goodness, what color is that rug, really? You know, and you just, you're just writing whatever's coming through your head, you know, like the wood walls, you know, not a bad blue, you know, stuff like that. And you're, you're thinking, this is meaningless, there's no way I'm going to turn this into a song, why do I even bother wasting paper scribbling using this ink? And, you know, it turns out that you didn't realize it, but then 
in a few sentences you've gotten down to another level just for a second and you say something that actually means something to you and you miss it while you're writing it. You're not really trying to catch it at that point anyway. So you let a few days go by or a few weeks or a few months and you go back to it and you see this little line in there or a phrase or just two words that, that actually stand out. And I was doing like little sentences and things like big thoughts. Then one of my students in one of my classes decided to just do one word separated by a comma. Fill out a whole page or three of just one word separated by a comma. Constant, constant changes. To it. And he wrote a really interesting lyric just from that. And I thought, I want to write a lyric just from that. You know, like anytime I hear of another way to get into that awesome creative space, you know, it's like we're surrounded by this incredible creativity all the time, but it's us that decides whether to go into that cool room to play or whether we're going to stay on the outside of it. Like, well, I gotta get a cup of tea, and I gotta find my favorite pen, and I don't know which guitar I wanna use, and uh, which tuning should I be in, and all. In the book, The War of Art, he talks about all the ways that we procrastinate, but then once we're in that space, right? Have you experienced that? When you're in that writing room, you're just like amazed. You're like, why did I come here three hours ago? You know, I just love being here. I love writing songs. This is just so much fun. So anyway, I was looking through all my words. I, I came up with a... and liked that. stuff and it was the end of the semester and I was really tired and I didn't really have a voice that day and I didn't feel like talking you know and I saw the words beyond talk and that started it and I was thinking I just want the semester to end because summer's coming and I take semester you know summer's off you know so I said uh, beyond talk I am tired of needing this change just need to change you know it's just right off the top of my head and I liked the line you know and then I saw um, star-filled ceiling. I have those uh, little stick-on stars that glow in the dark at night that I have on my ceiling. <laughs> and so I said, okay, behind lights, where my star-filled ceiling remains. And then I liked the fact that I said beyond, behind. I thought, okay, well, maybe there's a little pattern starting here. What can I say? The, another B word, you know, like beyond, behind, uh, before, beneath, uh, you know, all those things. So I was outside, I said beneath clouds where a smile could surrender this frown because I was feeling down, you know. And then I said, um, between thoughts when I falter, despair hit the ground. I thought, oh, this is, this is all right, this is good, you know. Um, <laughs> Sometimes life takes a whole day, and sometimes life gets in the way, you know. And I felt like I was one of those wolves, you know, like howling at the moon or something, because it was like, oh, 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 you know, <laughs> you know, 